talk about a couple tips related to basic cybersecurity. One of them was uh, addressing public Wi-Fi connections. And so I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into that today. I'm going to talk specifically about some things to consider when you're connected to a public Wi-Fi. First is if you have a direct connection to that public Wi-Fi. So what I mean by that is you walk into your local coffee shop, you know, you ask the barista, oh, what's your Wi-Fi password? It gives you the password and you connect up to the Wi-Fi directly. Okay. Here's the problem with that. When you're in that type of a situation, irrespective of the security they have on the router, okay, you are connected to a public Wi-Fi, meaning other people are on that network. So information can be sniffed or grabbed from the network traffic by other users. Now, what this means is I'm not going to be doing banking in my local coffee shop because as I log into that banking information inf or banking website, information has got to be transferred. Okay. If I log into my email, if I read, send email, social media logins, these types of things, that information can be viewed by other people. You are not secure with that information. Okay. This is not the, the case in all situations, just some of situations that's not secure. Okay. So definitely when I'm in a public place, hotel, coffee shop, wherever it might be, and I'm connected to that Wi-Fi that is a public Wi-Fi, other people have access to it. I'm not going to be doing my banking. I'm going to wait till I get home. I'm not going to be checking my emails or sending out personal emails that are important, assuming I don't have a secure email. Okay. I'm not going to be logging into social media. There's so much information we store on our social media. I don't want those accounts compromised. So this is something to consider when you first connect to these public Wi-Fi's. Next, let's talk about the router security. So even if you are connecting to a router in a public place that has a password, that doesn't mean you're protected. It might have built in firewalls. Your computer might have built in firewalls. Still does not mean you are protected. There are other people on the network. It's a shared space and a shared network, which means information can be viewed. Okay. Network settings and share settings. When you have, or when you join a, a new network, I'm specifically talking about windows here. <clears throat> A window pops up and it says is this a work network work network a home network or a public network well if you just kind of dismiss this screen don't read it and say oh yeah you know whatever I'm at home well that means your computer has now opened the doors for other people to come on in you're at a safe place you're at home when in reality you're not you're in a public place you don't might not know the person sitting next to you or across the table from you so be sure to choose uh, public if you are in fact connecting to a public Wi-Fi and if you're not, you're going to want to check your network settings and your share settings because we don't want to let other people into our computer, even in the shared space. I don't want them in there. Okay, so this is something we need to be aware of. I'm going to leave you with one other thing. Public Wi-Fi is just that. It's a public place. So take the same measures you would if you're going into a public washroom as opposed to walking into your washroom at home. Okay. And I use that analogy because, you know, we all know what we're talking about here. We get into a public washroom and we're kind of, you know, we're aware that it's a shared space rather than when I'm in, you know, going to the washroom at home, I'm uncomfortable, it's my washroom. So I use that analogy and that's the same way we should approach public Wi-Fi networks. Now, there are ways to improve the security in these situations. One primary one, which I want to talk about is using a VPN. VPN is a virtual private network. So when you're transferring data across this public Wi-Fi, your data is going to be secure. Browsing information is secure. Usernames and passwords are hidden. So this is a big improvement over just connecting to that Wi-Fi. Okay. Now I'm going to use an example here <clears throat> or a product called uh, CyberGhost. I don't work for them. I don't get any commissions, nothing like that. It is simply a product that I use that I've had a lot of um, good feedback about. Okay. So it offers a free option, which is even better. Don't have to pay for it. You can test it out. Okay. So let's actually go take a look at CyberGhost so you can kind of get an idea of how it works. So you would download it. You can simply Google CyberGhost. It's going to get you to their website. <clears throat> when you start up the program, it'll tell you your real location. Okay. And this is based on your IP address. Then what you can do is you can, sim you can choose a simulated country that you'd want. And you can also simulate your IP address if you'd want, or you can just leave it automatic. So the idea here is I'm in my local coffee shop. I've loaded up 
the program, okay? You picked a country if you want. If not, just you can leave that at automatic too. And then you hit the big power button or the big start button. It's going to say connecting. And if you're on the free version, you have to wait. Okay, so this pops up and you're going to have to wait a certain amount of time. So it will then connect to a simulated location and that VPN server. So essentially now, if I browse information over that public Wi-Fi, it can't be collected and you're a little bit more secure. So using a VPN can be quite handy, especially something like CyberGhost, which is free to get started. Like I said, to avoid that wait time and to avoid ads, um, it is a pay service and it's about five bucks a month. Definitely worth the money.